So I'm Tiffany Teske and I'm here today to talk about Fuji emulsion lifts and Fuji transfers. They both come from the same kind of film which is Fuji FP100C professional pack film. Um, this is the same transfers and emulsion lift type of process that uh, used to be done with Polaroid. It can still be done with 669 film but they have quit making it so it's harder and harder to use. Okay to make an emulsion lift you're going to need your day lab to make the exposure, you're going to need a 4x6 image. You're going to need a credit card or some sort of plastic card. You need a tray that you can put very hot, close to boiling water in. Um, you know, can have a piece of plexiglass or glass or something just in the bottom of the tray because you may need it for trying to um, spread out and straighten out your image once it's done. You need something that you're going to put the emulsion lift onto, um, some paper toweling. Uh, some gel medium and a brush and you'll need um, Fuji FP100C film to put into your day lab. So in order to load your your day lab you'll take your film pack this, pa this film is called pack film because there's two parts to each of it it's like a little pack um, when it comes out, it looks like this. This is a safety, a black safety paper that basically keeps it, you know, so that you can hold it out in the light like this and then there's nothing's going to happen to it. Um, you'll go to your day lab, pull this down. And this is basically a Polaroid back that, like they have on many cameras, um, but it's compatible to the Fuji film. There's only one way that you can load it, so don't worry because it won't sit down in there properly if you have it the wrong way. But you basically just want to make sure that you have your black safety tab coming out. So you shut it, lock this down. Now everything's light tight, so there's nothing, no, nothing's going to happen to the film. Um, you don't have to worry about not exposing it to light. Um, you'll pull this straight out. It's quite long, so just pull it out. And now, basically, you're ready to make an exposure. Um, you're going to make an exposure the same way whether you're making a transfer in the end or whether you're making an emulsion lift. These steps are, are not going to vary for both. Uh, this is just a plastic piece, a piece of black plastic that uh, basically goes over this window. Once you've laid your image down onto the window, it's just going to take a photograph of it. It's not quite a 4x6 size, it's more like 4x5, so if you have a 4x5 image that's okay. If you have a 4x6 like this, you just kind of have to guess about where you might want to line it up. So I'm going to put mine down, and you put this on top mainly so it doesn't blow away or so it makes a better exposure. Um, you'll turn on the machine. Uh, once it's ready to make an exposure, there'll be a green light that goes on. I usually start my first exposure of an image I haven't worked with uh, with the exposure knob in the middle. You can go either to the left or right to make less or more exposure. It's a pretty simple system that way. Um, once you, once the green light is on, you just push the print button and you'll see a flash uh, basically that will show you that it's taking the image. Then you can turn off the machine. You can go over and you pull on the top tab. And pull it straight out of the machine and you'll get another tab that has arrows pointing towards you. You'll take that one and pull it straight out. You don't want to be up or down because it won't go properly. The emulsion won't go spread through the rollers properly. So just pull it out. Now what will vary is if you're making a transfer you're going to have to do things within 20 seconds. If you're making an emulsion lift, which is what we're going to do now, you'll leave this together for 90 seconds to 2 minutes. Okay, now that you've left your um, pack film together for 2 minutes to expose it properly, or to process, uh, you'll just rip off the tabs like I just did, starting at the corner and peel them apart. Now you have your completed, your completed uh, image. This is what you could use for your emulsion lift. I like to wait until they're no longer tacky. Right now it's not quite dry. So I would let that dry for maybe at least 10 minutes, maybe up to a half an hour, and I'm just going to start the emulsion lift with a different image that I already have ready that's been dry. So I'm going to go and put that in my water, which is 
close to boiling. It's pretty pretty hot, but um, it doesn't have to be that hot, but the hotter the better in order for it to come off more quickly. So I put that in there, I make sure that there's water on all of it, and I'm going to leave it now for two minutes. The image has been sitting in the water for two minutes. It's ready to go. So you can just, I usually put the plexiglass in here so I can do this, pull it out and have a surface I can work on to just scrape scrape the emulsion off. So starting at one corner, um, Fuji emulsion lifts or Fuji emulsions are quite a bit more plasticky than Polaroid ones. So you don't have to be quite as gentle. So you can basically, once you get going, just take it off like that. I know with Polaroid, when I did that, I'd often get holes, uh, but these are much, much more durable. So you can kind of pull it out like this without the water, but it always helps to actually use the water to, to help you out. So I basically try to just pull it out as much as I want to, flatten out the image. So now that I've got it flattened out about as much as I would like, yeah. I'll just take it over to a paper towel and just kind of blot it dry a little bit. Um, it doesn't need to be completely dry when I put the gel medium on, but I try to get, get a lot of the liquid off. Um, if you leave these to dry too long, then they're really hard to actually put onto the surface, so you don't want them to dry um, for a long time. Uh, I have an example here. They get quite like cellophane, and they're almost pretty brittle when they're like that. So I usually just like to work with them when they're still, when you can still move them around and they're, they're a bit more flexible. So now... And this could be a shell or a rock or paper, whatever you're going to put yours onto. And a gel medium and a brush. And you can either put the medium onto here, which I think I'm going to do, or you can put it onto your emulsion lift. Now some people like to, to flatten these out really straight, some other people like to work with the fact that you can have it not come out totally square. So that's the choice is yours. I do mine pretty perfect for this one, yes. And then I would seal over the top too, so brush strokes and everything here. So there's your emulsion lift. Make a Fuji image transfer. So I have a piece of uh, this is printmaking paper. It's not that smooth. Um, I, I like a little bit of texture for the image I'm going to be using. I would recommend if you're going to be using anything with people's skin in it or people in it, that you try to use um, the most smooth watercolor paper that you can, just because otherwise you get a lot of modeling on the skin and it, it looks a little bizarre. Um, so you can use either printmaking paper or watercolor paper. I usually try to use for watercolor paper um, like a 140 pound quite stiff um, cold pressed paper. I usually actually I usually try to use a watercolor paper that's 140 pounds and that's hot press. Cold press usually has much more of um, a texture to it. Um, so this is cut to 5 by 7 uh, your image ends up being 3x4, so it, you can make it as small as um, a 4x6 piece of paper, but I, use, I like to have a, a lot of border around to work with. So I'll just take my paper and put it in the water. Uh, people have all kinds of theories about how hot the water needs to be. I don't, I've always just used water, so um, there's also theories that it needs to be distilled water. I don't find that to be the case, so um, I try to keep it simple. So I just wet the paper by turning it over like this. Uh, up to 10 times, I guess. And then I just have this plexiglass, or you can use a piece of glass or anything just to squeegee the water off. I don't want to get all the water out. It actually works better if the paper is pretty wet, but um, I squeegee one side. And then I put the side that's the wettest that I didn't squeegee onto my clipboard. And then I usually expose my, my image.
edge so that will sit and get a little dry but it won't be too bad. Just wait for the green light here and then push print and then I turn it off and I pull this straight out the number tab so that I see the black tab with the arrows and you should want to try to pull that out at not too much of an angle. Um, and now I've got about 20 seconds to do this part. So I, base, I peeled off the tabs like this. I'm going to want this part to touch my paper. So I'm going to take this tab and make sure it's underneath. And I'm going to clip this tab up under there. So that when I go into my dark room now, I'm going to basically lift this up, pull this out, and then push this down onto the paper. So now we'll take the negative off of the transfer and you'll be left with your transfer. So I usually do this at quite a sharp angle. Um, as you can see I'm actually bending the paper back onto itself and pushing down with my thumb. So uh, basically just to say that you're not pulling straight up and off because that will possibly um, cause parts of it to come off. If that's what you're going for then go ahead and do that but if you're trying to get most of it to stay onto the paper you need to go at quite an a severe angle. So there, that's a successful transfer. It's quite yellow just because of um, the. D it was more of a black and white type of image, and, and oftentimes they will turn out a bit more yellow. There are filters in your copy system that you can use to play with the filtration to do different things, um, but there's often a yellow cast and um, without filtration. So just to keep that in mind, I've got some other transfers to show you. This was another one. Um, that's dry now. Um, there's a little bit of missing corner there and that sometimes happens if you don't pull the film straight out parallel to the floor um, of your day lab. Uh, the, the emulsion hasn't been rolled through the rollers properly so a little bit of it missed that corner. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is here's a finished one that, that worked properly um, but this one was one that um, there was too much light that got in while I was um, peeling the two apart. Uh, you can do the peeling in a cardboard box, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a dark room, but that's where sometimes you might risk something like that happening. Um, but as with anything with art, I feel like there's applications for everything. Um, these are both Polaroid transfers, and um, so these are basically, I sometimes sell these as just the finished uh, photograph, but I also incorporate them into collage. Um, and uh, you know sometimes scan them so that I can digitally use them into in digital collages or to um, print them out um, on photocopies sometimes to do other sorts of applications like encaustic collage so there's many things that you can do with these